Hello ladies and gents, welcome to another video. Recently, Steve from Tronics Fix attempted to repair a PlayStation 4 Pro 500 million limited edition console, and unfortunately, he couldn't do it. And he bet me that I couldn't fix it as well. So, here we are, he sent it over, and there's a nice little post-it note saying, bet you can't fix this. Well, Steve, challenge accepted. I have to say that, having seen the video already, I'm a channel member over on Tronic Fix's channel. And if you don't know who he is, by the way, I will leave a link down below, up in the top corner and in the top pin comment of the video. Highly recommend checking him out. And I do owe a great deal of gratitude to Steve because if it wasn't for him and the help that he gave me about two years ago, my channel wouldn't be anywhere near where it is today. So genuinely, Steve, from the bottom of my heart, I truly appreciate it. From what I've seen of the video, it's a lung pulsing blue light of death, and that can be a very difficult repair. But the lung pulsing blue light of death essentially is where you turn it on and it will attempt to boot up, but because it can't boot up, because there's an issue, it will just keep pulsating a blue light. You'll get no display on the screen and it just won't turn on. It'll do that until it either overheats or until it loses power. But if you are new to the channel, and you like this type of content, I would really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and turn on the bell notifications, that way you don't miss any future videos. And if you do want to support me in any way, there'll be a Patreon link in the video description. You can check me out over there, or you can become a Twitch Prime subscriber by linking an Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account, and then subscribing to me completely free with Twitch Prime. But with that being said, let's get into this video. All right, so this come with this here. I have already cleaned off the APU because I kept getting the thermal paste on my hands. It was going all over the place. So I've cleaned off the APU, but other than that, I haven't done anything to this. So let's leave that there as a constant reminder. But if you haven't watched the other video as well, I did do a challenge with Tronic 6 about two years ago. I won't spoil what happened in the video, but I'll leave a link in the corner now. So check that out if you want to check that one out first. And like I said, I owe a great deal of gratitude to Tronic Fix. I really do. That video did absolutely phenomenally well. And yeah, that really did kickstart my channel. So genuinely, again, Steve, I really appreciate it. But anyway, let's try and figure out what's going on with this. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is teach Steve a lesson in how to apply the perfect amount of thermal paste. Because Steve doesn't know. Number one, he doesn't apply the correct amount. And number two, he doesn't pronounce it correctly. So you know how some people will pronounce solder as solder? Well, obviously that's wrong. And it's the same with this. They call it thermal paste. It's not thermal paste. It's thermal pasta. And that is the perfect amount. I'm declaring it now. Okay, so I've got a test housing here and this test housing is the correct housing for this board. And actually, I forgot to I forgot to assemble it properly. So I've, I've recently assembled this test housing specifically for this video. And I know that the power supply in here is good. I know the disk drive is good. Uh, I know the fan is good. So yeah, everything in this is absolutely fine which is going to allow me to test it easily. So let's just get this board in. So I'll hook everything up. So anyone would think I was actually prepared for this video. Now, to tell you the truth, I've had this this board for about a week, but I was waiting for Steve's video to be released, or at least released to his channel members. Uh, for those of you that don't know, YouTube has got a channel membership feature, and Steve, Steve gives, whoops, Steve gives early access to videos for anyone on his channel. Uh, what else do I need? Uh, I'm going to ignore them thermal pads. They fell off the board. Let's just drop a hard drive on. So everything else apart from the board has come out of my parts pile. And I do know that all of these are good. We don't really need the antennas, but I'm going to plug them in anyway because they, they always trail otherwise. And this, unfortunately, isn't the official heatsink clamp for this particular model. It is a PS4 clamp, but it's not the official one. I don't have one for these boards, so as I can test it. So what I'm gonna to have to do is just partially screw these in. Because if I screw them in all the way, then unfortunately this metal here is gonna to touch the board. And obviously I don't want that because that would short it out. So I'll just screw it in partially. As long as it's making a contact, it's enough for testing. And this is never gonna stay in this housing anyway. I might as well remove these thermal pads because they're all gonna fall off anyway. They always do. 
So I'll just remove them. They're not absolutely needed. Ram doesn't run incredibly hot, or at least not for a long time. I'll just pop in a power supply, like I said. This is a non-good power supply. This is my test power supply. All right, moment of truth. What is happening with this console? Do we get a fan spin? Yes, we do. Okay, so we've got a fan spin. The console is turned on, and it's going through what I call the initial system diagnostics. So when the console first turns on, this blue light is essentially the console doing some self-tests, like a post that you will get on a PC. So it's doing a few tests, like it'll test the RAM, it'll test the APU and all of that sort of stuff, and then if everything's okay, it'll proceed to a white light and allow it to boot up. But when I saw Steve's video, I saw that it wouldn't get past this long pulsing blue light here. And we call that a long pulsing blue light of death. So that's still pulsing blue. It should have gone into safe mode by now, but let's just pop in a HDMI cable. A HDMI splitter here. And as you'll see on my desk, that goes off to two ports here. One to my TV, one to my capture card. And the capture card part, that goes into the HDCP splitter to remove HDCP so as the PS4 can be used with a capture card. Let's just have a look. And okay, we've got absolutely no HDMI detect at all. So we should be getting a blue light here. If I go to my capture card, it'll come up no signal. Yep, so it's definitely not stuck in safe mode. And we are still lung pulsing blue. All right, so while it's turned on, one thing I can do is I can use the thermal camera and see if anything's getting very hot. If anything's getting incredibly hot, then that could indicate a short somewhere. And the lung pulsing blue light of death can be caused by absolutely anything. So any component on the board being short can cause it, unfortunately. So let's just have a look at what the temperatures on the board are saying. Okay. We've got the RAM here. The RAM appears to be turning on. What's the temperature of my RAM? We're on around about 50, 50 degrees Celsius on the RAM. Doesn't appear to be one RAM chip getting hotter than any of the others. Uh, okay, we've got a bit of a heat spot here. So it looks like we've got some high current draw around here. Sorry, here rather. So right here... This area here is, there's a, there's a bunch of MOSFETs on the other side of the board. So this is an NVG board, but it's essentially the same. So on the other side of the board, we've got a bunch of MOSFETs, uh, a bunch of tantalum capacitors, some inductors. This is all for voltage regulation. I think that's voltage regulation for the APU. Uh, I could be wrong, but we haven't got schematics, so I don't know exactly. But we've got a little bit of heat coming from there. I mean, they're hitting 50 degrees Celsius. I wouldn't expect that area to hit 50 degrees Celsius like that. Uh, let's just hunt around. Uh, yeah, the safe bridge is a little bit warm as well, actually. I wouldn't expect that to hit 50 degrees Celsius, but it is. Hmm. 51 degrees Celsius, 52 degrees. Yeah. The RAM's currently at 57 degrees Celsius. I would expect that to get hotter as we go along. But yeah, all of the heat seems to be focused around the APU, the RAM, and the South Bridge. Okay. All right. Well, we're still lung pulsing blue as well. So, as you can see there, it's still lung pulsing. So, let's shut this down. I'm going to have to just remove power. I'm not going to be able to shut that down gracefully. Uh, let's get the board out and we'll start doing some fault finding if we can. Actually, no, before I do that, I'm going to plug it back in, turn it on, and I'm going to test this area here for voltage and just see if we've got anything around that area. I think that's probably the best first step. And under the microscope, you can see here we've got this little circuit here. So this is where the MOSFETs are going to be, but just on the other side of the board. Let's see if I can pick up some voltage around there. So we've got 5 volts on here, 5 volts at the other end of the resistor. We've got 0 0.36 volts there. I'm not sure how it's meant to read. Same there, 0 0.35. 1.08 volts there. 5 volts there again. 0 0.36 there. Exactly the same on that phase. 
And the final phase. Yeah, everything's checking out there. Uh, it, well, I say checking out. I don't have any base for comparison, but it seems to be normal. Let's just have a look up here. And we'll see what's going on up here. 1.05 volts there. I would say that's normal. 0.95 there. 3.23 there. 2.06. 5. Yeah, I'm going to say that this is all normal so far. 0.65. I'm not sure about that. It's the same on the other one though. 1.8 volt, 2 volts, uh, wait, what was this one? 2 volts, okay, and what was that again? That was 0 0.95. I would say that's going to be for the APU, 0 0.95 volts. So I'd say that's probably normal. 2 volts on both of those. 4.69 and 3.3. That's going to be ground. Okay, that seems normal. Do we get any 5 volt on the USB? So ignore this here. This is going to be flux from the factory. I'm not worried about that. Do we have 5 volts on the USBs? I don't actually know where 5 volt comes in on these. I'm sure I'll find it. I could have just plugged in the USB ammeter. 0 0.6 volts. Uh, then again, that looks like a data line to me. Okay, I don't appear to be getting any 5 volt at all on the USB. So we're still switched on. The board is still on. Let's just plug in a USB ammeter and see if we get any voltage on the ports. Okay, that's interesting. No 5 volt on the ports. Yeah, no 5 volt on the rear USB as well. Okay, that is a little bit odd, I'm going to say how we don't get any 5 volt at all. Let's just see, do we get do we get any charging current on a controller? Nope. So we've got no USB activation at all, so that could actually be a Sainsbury's issue. Okay, so let's just have a little hunt around over here. Let's just see what's going on on this side of the board, see if there's anything I can pick up that could be causing the issue. So I'll scan with the microscope and see if there's anything obvious. Alright, so let's just have a look then. So I'm around F5001, which I believe is a 5 volt line. And that fuse is good. So I'm just going to check for shorts in this area and just see if we've got any kind of obvious issue. I believe this is all for 5 volt. I could be wrong. Uh, we actually have the back of the safe bridge here. Let's just see if we've got any shorts around here. I will say though, just because there's no shorts around here, it doesn't mean that the area that the chip itself is good. So if, even if we don't find any shorts, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not the safe bridge. It's just that we can get an indicator sometimes of an issue when we get a short in the area. I'm just going to scan random components because well we could have a short anywhere. There's obviously going to be something somewhere but it's just finding it. Okay I'm not seeing anything around there. No nothing. Uh, this area here is low impedance so I can't really test this area. Or at least I can't test it for shorts because he's going to read a short anyway. That's a random solder ball off my desk. I not worry about that. How are my disk drive fuses looking? Because that wasn't accepting uh, a disk. Okay, interesting. F6202 is open. That one's working. But F6202 is open. Is that short to ground? It's 0.15 on that side. 
1.51 on that side. Okay, I have actually come across this before. If I remember correctly, it was something to do with this chip here, I think. So F6202 is basically the disk drive fuse. And if you look on a donor board, F6202, the silk screen is in a different place, but it points down to here in the same place. But F6202 down here, oh, okay, apparently it's, uh, <laughs> apparently this one's blown as well. But it's meant to be 0 0.42. Interesting. So on the left-hand side of the fuse, it's supposed to be 0 0.42 and 0 0.52 on the other side. That's actually got a blown F6202, but it's kind of beside the point. Uh, let's get another board. Let's try and find one that's actually got a good working fuse on it. Uh, NVA001, that means the fuse should be on this side, yeah. And I've stole the donor fuse off that. Oh, well. How about that one? Yeah, that's got the fuse on it. Uh, okay, so if you look here, it's the same circuit. But you can see there we've got a reading on that fuse. And uh, 0.54, yeah. So we've definitely got an issue in that area. And if memory serves me correctly, the last time I had that issue was when I purchased four PlayStation 4s as a job lot. I, I did a couple of videos on it. I think I traced it back to here. We should get a beep on the fuse. So if we check F7 F sorry, F6201, we get a beep. F6202, we don't. There is definitely an issue there somewhere. And I believe, last time I had this issue, I'm pretty sure I traced it back to here somewhere. I'm almost sure of it. Okay, so there's F6202 here. So I'm doing this without the microscope because... Yeah, there it is. I was doing that without the microscope purely because it's too awkward to keep scanning around, moving the microscope around and stuff. But I'll go under the scope now that I know where it is. So we've got a little transistor just here marked JL. And if we look, that goes into this chip just here. So this here is uh, a Realtek chip by the look of the logo, RT55482. So it goes into there, it goes into that chip. So if we look at where F7002, sorry, I keep saying F7002, I'm thinking of the PS5. If we look at where F6202 is here. So I've got one probe on there. And then if you look here, we get a beep just there. So that means that we get a continuous path from F6202 to just here. So I think we've got an issue with this circuit here somewhere. Now the most obvious thing would be this transistor here, this six pin transistor just here. So I think I'm going to remove that and just see if it changes the impedance before I go any further or see if it changes the diode reading rather. So I've got my hot air set at 440 degrees Celsius at 50% airflow with a nozzle on. I'm going to be careful because we've got a speaker just here, a little mono speaker. It's like a, a PC speaker. Uh, nope, unfortunately that is going to melt. I can always change the speaker. Yeah, I think that... I think that uh, oh, the chip's actually breaking. That's a bit odd. Okay, but that's removed anyway. So now let's just check this again. So in diode mode, let's turn the beeper off. Red probe on ground. No, still the same diode reading there, 0 0.11. So it's something else. Okay, so I think the best thing I can do here is just remove, well, pretty much everything off this circuit until I find the culprit. The problem is, finding the culprit is easier said than done. I'll check again. I won't bother moving the microscope unless something changes. And in this case, no. Can I remove that? Still no change, wow. So I think, let's go back into continuity mode with the beeper on. And I think I'm gonna check and see if I can 
trace this some more because I've removed these components from here and I'm not picking it up. I'm wondering if it goes back through the board here. No, it doesn't appear to. It appears to go through an internal layer from there. Right, okay, so full disclosure, it's a few days later. I had to stop working on this board because a few things have happened. Uh, the channel has had a lot of diff a lot of traffic for different reasons over the past few days, and it's just been hectic. So I've been filming different videos and things like that, and yeah, it's about three or four days later. I don't know exactly how many days, but yeah, everything what I've done on this, I've just watched back the content which I've already recorded, and everything I've done on this is leading me to believe that there's an issue with either this chip here, which is the disk drive controller, the Renesas chip, or it's leading me to believe that there's an issue with the APU itself. Um, I don't want to believe it's the APU, I, I want to believe it's probably this chip, but the problem with that is that this chip is paired with this chip, this chip, uh, this chip, this chip, and this chip, right? So, if it comes to it where those chip, where this chip has failed, um, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a big problem. But I'm going to remove this chip. Well, it wouldn't be a massive problem. Technically, it can be fixed, but it's just not economically viable. So I'm going to remove this chip real quick. I'll pop under the scope actually, just so you can see what I'm doing. So yeah, this is it's marked as MediaTek, but it's known as the Renesas IC. They used to use Renesas chips back in the day, and then they changed to MediaTek on the PS4 Slims, I think. One of the later revisions. And this is basically what controls the disk drive. But the F6202, the disk drive fuse, as far as I'm aware, goes back to here as well. Okay, so that's removed. So, yeah, like I said, this is a MediaTek chip. You'll have to excuse my hands, they're not very steady today. But, as you can see, it's a custom chip by uh, MediaTek for Sony Interactive. And that is paired to all of the rest of the chips on the board, which is really, really annoying. Right, let's have a look over here now. Uh, actually, let's test it at the fuse. So, we'll test it at F6202. So, in diode mode... We get 0.43 volts there, and oh, still 0.17 there. Hmm. We still get 0.17 there, so it can't be that chip. Hmm. I wonder if. Hmm. It is possible that that's given me a different reading because the disk drive fuse has blown. That is possible. I'll tell you what. Actually, let's go back to F6202 here, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to basically bridge the fuse. I'll just make sure that is blown and that I wasn't losing my mind a few days ago. Yeah, that is absolutely blown. I've got that on continuity mode and that is definitely blown. I'm wondering if that's given me a different reading just because the fuse isn't... Well, it's technically missing because of it being blown. I'll just remove that fuse. So let's just try and bridge this fuse with solder then. There we go. So the key to doing a bridge that long is purely to just not use any flux. There's flux inside the solder itself, so yes, that looks horrible, but it is temporary. If I ever got this board working, I would not leave it like this. I would never leave a fuse bridged. It's dangerous and it can cause not only further damage to the board, but it can also cause fires. And that... In fact, that hasn't even, <laughs> that hasn't even made a contact. Uh, I might have to put a fuse on. Okay, that's got it. Yeah, never mind. So, yeah, it's difficult to bridge a fuse when it's that far across without running jumper wire. But, yeah, that's got a contact now. So let's put that back in diode mode. And I'll give you a reading of what we're getting now. So if I go back to the overhead, then you'll be able to see the multimeter. So diode mode, red probe on ground, and... 
Huh. No. No. Unfortunately, not. Exactly the same. We need to find where that goes. I think it might be time to inject voltage into there, just to see if I can pick it up with heat. So that's actually a 12 volt line, but I would never recommend in injecting 12 volts into it because if it is short to another line, then it's going to cause further damage. But I've got my bench power supply set to 1.8 volts. Let's use the thermal cam then. Let's see what we can get. Where is this short going to show up? On one of those MOSFETs. Yeah, on one of those MOSFETs. It was getting hot in that area. Let's just double check that with isopropyl alcohol. Yeah, that's definitely getting hot. Okay, so is that MOSFET bad? So it was getting very hot in this area. I did mention that at the start. Okay, so there's that MOSFET removed. And it's still taking a lot of heat and a lot of current in that area. Looks like one of these MOSFETs is getting hot now. Alright, so has he taken out one of these MOSFETs as well? Let's find out. Okay, that MOSFET there gets hot. Let's remove that. There you go. So that's removed. Okay, let's inject again. And it would appear that we've still got shorts on these MOSFETs. Hmm. Right, I'm just going to remove all of these MOSFETs. It's looking like every time we clear one, it's, it's going to be clearing another short. But showing up another one. The problem is, if one has a higher resistance, even if it's minutely higher resistance than another, it's not going to show up that one until you clear the other one. So I'm just going to make my life easier and remove all these FETs. If it still doesn't clear the short, then we've probably got some sort of an internal short. I wouldn't recommend doing this, it's just I want to save a little bit of time. The problem is all of these phases are connected together. That's the issue. That's the issue that we've got. So, is it still short? It appears as though it is. It's just not clearing the short. It's all over the place as well. I don't know if you saw that then. It was just like... Boo, 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 boo. Like the resistance is just everywhere. I think that's an internal short, to be honest. I think it's internal on the board. I don't think this board can be fixed. Right. I think this one's beat me. And I think Steve has beat me as well. Steve, you suck. <laughs> no, on a serious note, that was a lot of fun. I enjoy working on uh, things that challenge me. Unfortunately, on this occasion, I just don't think this board is fixable. I don't know how far that... Uh, that issue with the disc drive is going to have gone, but I think that is where the issue stemmed from in the first place. Uh, lung pulse in blue light of death, it's a rabbit hole. They are fun to work on sometimes, but they are a rabbit hole. I was going to go to the ends of the earth with this one. I was literally going to go as far as replacing the APU. I've got a complete set here with a working APU. I was going to replace that APU, but I just don't think it's worth it. If you haven't already, please check out Steve's channel. Uh, Tronic Fix, I'll leave a link in the video description and top pin comment. I really do recommend it. He's a great guy, Steve. I really do genuinely appreciate you sending this over to me to uh, to take a look at and try and fix. Unfortunately, you win some, you lose some. And this time, we lost. So that's going to be for this video. Let me know what you think down in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe if you are new to the channel. Check out the methods of support in the video description. And if you're looking for something else to watch, then maybe check out the video which is going to pop up on the screen now. But that's going to be it for now. Thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye for now.